Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome back to another video. I had some questions on how I slept uh, throughout the advanced class this, you know, last weekend that passed. So I figured I'd shoot a video on that rather than answer a bunch of private messages and emails. And I'll show you guys exactly how I slept. Now, I'm going to shoot a separate video talking about, you know, wool blankets and military sleep systems. I've had a lot of questions in the past about those things as well. And I've always said pretty much from day one that, yes, in fact, I prefer a wool blanket over a sleep system. And uh, I still stick to that. Uh, I mentioned also in a past video or a couple videos that the MSS sleep system definitely has its place so don't mistake that and don't take this video the wrong way and uh, really what it boils down to for me personally on which one of those I choose is whether or not I can have a fire and that's what we're going to talk about in this video because there's definitely different types of fires and I don't think you know people quite understand the difference and what you need to make it through a cold night sleep a uh, cold night out in the wilderness with just a wool blanket uh, it's been the topic of discussion you know for many years now Dave Canterbury swore by a wool blanket you know forever and ever and then you know people run out by a wool blanket and then they go out to do things and they freeze at night and uh, there's a good reason for that so today we're gonna talk about a couple different types of fires and mainly the difference between a campfire and a survival fire so I'm gonna show you again how I slept throughout the advanced class that we had here in New Hampshire uh, the temperatures hovered right around 20 degrees it was very windy so with the wind chill on a couple of those days was about four degrees and uh, I slept right here just like you see it uh, nothing more nothing less and I chose the wool blanket again because I could have a fire and to be honest with you other than one night at about 3 30 in the morning I didn't even use the wool blanket I actually slept right on top of this setup just like you see it uh, without crawling into that wool blanket again other than that one night where my fire had died down and rather than get up and stoke it you know I was lazy and just tucked under the wool blanket so uh, I'm gonna adjust the camera I'm gonna show you guys how I set up my long log fire is what it's called uh, you can call it a survival fire you can call it a hey what's gonna keep me warm tonight fire or whatever you want to call it but uh, it's typically referred to as a long log fire. I'm going to show you how I set that up. Uh, we'll get it going and I'll uh, give you a shot in and out of the shelter here and show you what that looks like. And then we'll go ahead up and go ahead and set up your typical camp type fire and show you the difference between the two here on video so you can see that there's a huge difference and in the winter time uh, at least up here in the north northeast uh, those small type cooking fires or campfires just ain't gonna cut it you know for a warm night's sleep unless you chose a military sleep system and again that's the only variable to me personally on why I choose one or the other I've used a sleep system almost all over the planet now with the military I've slept in all kinds of different conditions and the sleep systems never failed me and I've never had a fire using it obviously in the military so uh, again it does have its place so let me stop rambling here uh, show you how I set up this long log fire I uh, will get it going and I'll uh, go from there hang tight guys alright guys so here's what I got so far uh, it's probably enough actually uh, the only thing I might want to grab a bit more of is my small stuff right here to actually get the fire going but I've got my long log fire pit if you will already set up uh, nice big beefy piece here in the front to keep 
the logs from rolling off towards my bed in the middle of the night so that'll take a while to burn through so I like to have that right up front I just stacked a couple logs there's a couple leftover pieces from you know last weekend when I slept here all I do really to set this up you can see I've laid a bunch of birch bark right on the bottom all across the length of my fire pit here after that I'm going to take my small stuff add that on top the full length as well then I'm going to take my neck size up being kindling I'm going to do the same with that and then I can throw a little bit bigger stuff you know like this right on top of all that and the key for me at night to stay in warm is I'll set that all up and I'll just leave it until I'm ready to go to bed I can have a small cook fire right off to the side that'd make it even easier to just transfer some of them coals to here and get my fire going no problem or you know just a little something to heat up some you know tea or coffee hot chocolate whatever the case may be I can have that off to the side but this big fire I'm gonna save that till right before I go to bed so I don't waste all this calorie expenditure with what I got going on back here you can see I got some pretty substantial uh, trees if you will or BFTs I'll let you guys figure that one out but uh, I'll bring the camera around and give you guys an end shot of that so you can see you know what what type of material and how much you need to run one of these all night long Alright, so there's an end view like I said. And this is a pretty beefy, substantial piece right here. And after I have had my fire burning for quite some time and have a good bed of coals in there, you know, a decent flame going to where there's a lot of heat, I throw this thing on last right before I go to bed. And chances are, no more stoking needing throughout the night opposed to you know your typical small campfire which we'll show you guys as well which is a lot more of this little stuff you know you'd have to this type of kindling uh, and it's all pine so it's gonna burn hot but it's gonna burn quick and all this little stuff you need a big mound of that stuff you know and you're gonna have to constantly feed that thing throughout the night so if you're running that route I'd recommend you know probably the sleep system and just don't even worry about a fire period um, but if you're gonna run with a wool blanket this is how you want to be set up and this is what you're gonna have to do to get a nice warm sleep in the winter months anyways so again I think you can see all the birch bark in there again after that I just take a bunch of my little stuff here and start adding it to the top of that shake it out some and again this stuff is pine and I've said this in a lot of my other videos my two favorite resources up here in the Northeast are pine and birch bark they're both the way to go as far as heat and the ease of making fire birch bark obviously being the king because you can get that stuff going even when it's wet uh, the pine again burns hot so this is going to give me a good start to my fire and that it's going to burn hot and leave some hot coals pretty quick so I can start adding some bigger stuff and I'll just toss that on there just like that and then I'll move on to my bigger stuff some of that fatter stuff right on the top there just like that
Alright, and that's going to get me going in the right direction here. And what I'll do, being that I line the whole bottom with that birch bark, I'll just go ahead and light it from one end and then the other end, and it'll burn its way towards the middle, and I'll have a nice fire going by that point. Alright, so we've lit it from both ends, you know, and this is not, I'm in a survival situation, let me break out the ferro rod. This is, I'm about to go to bed, I'm at camp, break out the lighter, and let's get a fire going. You can see that thing just taking off nuts. The birch bark is going to catch all the way underneath, you know, if the wind doesn't go against me here. And then again, all that little stuff on top of it. Same principles that I use constantly. It doesn't matter what type of fire that I'm using. Uh, same materials. Uh, same idea. See, it's coming now from the other end as well. Once this thing is going, I'm going to tell you what. It was like a tannin bed in here uh, through my advanced class. And again, I didn't even use the wool blanket other than one time. You know, wee hours of the morning when the fire had died down, and I just was too lazy to go stoke it up. That's pretty much how we're looking. You know, again, once that fire catches all the way through, it's some warm on top of that bed. And uh, we'll, we'll discuss the bed setup uh, and the tarp setup here in just a minute. Alright guys, so I think you can see this while we let our fire catch up and burn to the middle here. We'll go ahead and talk about the setup that I had. So this is just my Labarca wool blanket. I did add a sleep pad to the top of three logs. I didn't need to cut a bunch to go the length of my bed. I just ran three the long way, put my mat right on top of it, and I actually separated the back log just a bit created a nice little divot where my body just sunk right into it. It was nice. This fire is blazing right now. Uh, typically, you know, survival manuals and a lot of videos on YouTube will explain with a raised bed in the winter time, you want to stuff that thing full of leaves and debris underneath to battle, you know, convection. <clears throat> so, you don't want that cold air rolling underneath you. Uh, I opted not to do that through experience. Ooh, that fire is so hot. Through experience because I'm having all this heat roll through my shelter and back underneath. Give you underneath. guys a quick look at that fire. Now that's a survival fire, or I'm gonna keep you warm tonight fire. And again, I'm just gonna burn that out. I'm not gonna waste all my hot iron calories back there because I do spend nights out here so I'm gonna save that but I think you guys can see that there'd be no problem keeping that fire going with what I got for wood back there if I just toss some more long stuff on there now I'd be good to hit. Right. <clears throat> so again nothing underneath uh, again that's usually what people tell you to do that's what the manuals tell you to do but with a long log fire like I've got here and the way this system is set up, you can see I closed in one end of my shelter here and it's sat so it needs some touching up, it needs more leaves added to it like any debris hut would. But uh, that sheltered me from the wind from one side, yet if I get smoke or wind up by my head here, I've got one end open also to let that smoke get out of here. So I'm not totally enclosing myself and trapping all that smoke in here but again the heat is coming right up rolling around my shelter to include right underneath me now 
if I put leaves and debris underneath, yes, it's gonna help me out because it's gonna trap dead air space, which in turn is insulation and that's gonna keep you warm. However, with this type of fire burning all night, I'm actually getting heat rolling underneath me as well. And that's keeping me even warmer than them leaves or debris would. So this is how I spent, you know, my nights at the advanced class that we had up here. Had a nice view out the end with a full moon that rises right there in the east. So that was good to hook. So now let's talk about, you know, what not to do in the winter, at least if you're using a wool blanket, like I said. Uh, this is a debris hut that the students finished together. Uh, it's not the best, but they did a good job. Uh, it's lined with spruce boughs on the inside, although they did leave some of that big crap on there, which you don't want to do. You really want to strip all this stuff off and use all the little stuff. But uh, not a bad shelter overall, by any means. So let's talk about, you know, the typical campfire, which I think causes a lot of people problems, especially if they're trying to follow, you know, people that say, you know, I'm gonna run out in the woods with a wool blanket, and then they end up freezing. Uh, and, you know, they're probably miserable. Most of the time, instead of enjoying their time, like they could with the long life of fire we just showed you. So I got a small setup here of your typical campfire and uh, we'll get this going and show you how big of a difference it is. So again, same small pine stuff, just like we used in the long log fire, helping us out with some birch bark on the inside. Now this type of fire, like I was saying, you're gonna need a pretty substantial bit of this type of firewood. So if this is all you got to work with, and you don't have the big stuff kicking around or you don't want to cut it down or chop it down you're gonna need a pile of wood like this probably as tall as you are and probably twice again as wide uh, to keep you going through the night and the bad thing about that is you have to constantly feed this thing all night long <clears throat> another thing you know you see in the manuals and a lot of videos on YouTube you know, you get that reflector in the back of the fire, push some of the heat back towards your shelter. Uh, it is a technique, it is effective, it does definitely work. Uh, with the long log fire, I'll tell you now, it's not needed. So again, in my shelter, that type of fire is actually doing very little for me. And to boot, I have to constantly feed that type of fire all night long so one I'm probably not gonna get a good night's sleep I'll be up on and off you know probably more up than sleeping throughout the night to feed this thing and it's just it's not conducive to cold weather you know camping or whatever you want to call this so nice little blaze there again but not conducive to a good night's sleep in the winter time. Alright guys, appreciate you joining me for this video. I appreciate your views, comments, all your support as always. And until the next one, take care.